Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new series on a Mini Cooper. So let me tell you about this Mini Cooper before we look around it. Um, it was an interesting story. Um, well, I found it interesting anyway. So took the works car to an MOT centre. Lady in front of me, her car failed. This Mini Cooper failed on lower suspension arms. She was quoted something in the region like £450 to have it all fixed. And at that point she was like, it's not worth it. It's not worth spending their money on the car because of the age and the mileage which we'll get into in a second um and so i made an offer right then and there i said look if you want to sell it go and look at another car today because she was planning on doing that anyway i said if you want to sell it go ahead um give me a call at the end of the day um and we'll do a deal on it so went to work carried on the day she rings me back sort of five o'clock ish i think it was saying yeah i bought another car if you want it you can have the mini and so i said 450 quid I think that's fair. I looked on WeBenny car, they were sort of selling, saying they'd give it 400 quid for it, but we always know they're going to knock them down. And that gave, felt, made me feel like I was giving a fair price for what I was buying. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the story. I now own a Mini. Um, obviously, Katie was really happy when I came home and said, oh, by the way, there's a lady dropping a car off at six o'clock. Uh, kind of like a what scenario. Um, but you know, the, we, the, we have to do these things and keep going, keep pushing the channel, keep getting new content. Um, so yeah, so let's delve into uh, this issue with the suspension a little bit more depth. Okay, so the issue we have is basically at the back of the suspension, and yeah, don't be put off by the number of parts. Um, so at the back of the suspension, you've got these rubber bushes here, and basically the arm goes into the bush, and then it stops it kind of having any kind of lateral movement. On this, on both sides, you see that? I'll try and hold the camera steady. Yeah, it's not supposed to do that. And it's the same on both sides. So over time, that has just perished, and that is shifting the geometry of all the suspension around um, and is not safe at all. So I thought, oh, I have to replace like these bushes. It'd be an easy job. I couldn't have been further from being right. Um, so yeah, in order to fix these, you have to drop the entire subframe because you can't get access to these two bolts and apparently they're really tight and they're really difficult to get off. So I thought, well, if I've got to drop the subframe, I might as well do it correctly. So I've got new drop links new uh, ball joints, inner, outer. I've even bought new arms and I know I don't need to replace these, but I thought if I'm gonna go to the hassle, these, this entire purchase here of all these parts came to like 200 quid. So if we can fix this for 200 quid and then stick it back through another MOT for 50, that means that basically I spent 450 pounds on the car, 200 pound on the parts, so that's 650, another 45, so 700 quid, we can have this sorted. I've also, within that 200 pound budget, bought some replacement bonnet stripes, because I don't know if you can see, but there's a color difference where the stripes used to be. So rather than trying to sort out the bodywork, I'm just gonna whack some new stripes back on there. We're gonna give it a clean. I've bought new mini center caps just to finish the wheels off so they look nice. Um, and yeah, I think after this is had a clean, after we've done all the work on it, after we've done the suspension, I think this is going to make a really nice car for somebody. And I say it's got um, two keys. One of the keys didn't work when I first got it, but it was just a battery needed soldering into it because it's a rechargeable battery on the keys for this car. It starts on the button. I say, let's have a look inside. So you've got full leather interior. The seats in the back are really, really tidy. There's no bits of trim. Usually in these cars, you think of that things like this, bits of trim missing and stuff like that. It's even got the original ashtray, which is incredible because the, these tend, the lids tend to snap off them. Um, I wasn't expecting it, but it's got heated seats. Air conditioning blows ice cold. You don't have to worry about that. It starts on the button every time. I've got all the book packs for it. Um, all the documentation. And yeah, it's, it's, it's had everything done to it it's ever needed to be done. And even her dad, when I was talking to him, said that, you know, every time she's needed to have something done to the car, she's always done it. So we've got a good one here. I've just got to muster up the energy now to drop the subframe. So I'll get you set up on tripod and then we'll get cracking. we 
Right, so that's the wheels off and it jacked up in the air. And if I can get the camera around and show you, this is here though that pushes, um, bolts onto the chassis here. And then you've got two bolts at the top, which are incredibly hard to get to, which is why you have to lower the whole frame down. And then as you, I don't know if you can see it. It's got some movement on that as well. So I think the first thing I need to do is yeah. disconnect this ball joint here. I have bought new outer ball joints. Apparently to get access to it better, you take the disc off. So I'll take the disc off first. That is the discs off. You notice there I put a bolt back into the disc after loosening off the retaining nut that holds the disc in place, just so that didn't wobble while I was taking the caliper off. I've now got to get this dust shield off, so I'm just going to let these soak because these are likely to snap because they're so small. And I've also pre lubricated the uh, lower um, anti roll bar joint there and this one here. So hopefully. That has it all, um, yeah, that should have it all kind of loosening up. I'm going to get a drink now, have a break from it because it's starting to get quite hot. And then we'll go from there. But ultimately, after I've got that out, we should be then free here. We've got to disconnect. There's a ball joint here as well. Um, all these bits we're replacing. Um, there's a bolt up here, at the top of the subframe mount and then we need to take the front bumper off because there are bolts down here at the end of the crash bar which are also part of the subframe so let's grab a drink and we'll come back in a bit right so while that's all having a nice little bath in some penetrating fluid let's get this front bumper off and let's have a look so we've got an electrical connector there we need to disconnect for the indicator and then behind the arch liner down here, which I've already started to try and take off and some of these are a bit mangled, um, we've got another connector for the front fog lights. And then I'm hoping it's just a couple of bolts and it should come straight off. So we'll see how we get on with that. Right, so that's the bumper off. Um, if you look on here, you see they've got these plastic tabs just there. I don't know if that's showing the sun. You get these plastic tabs, one on either side, and they literally locate down into this slot here. So they just lock into those slots. So the nice thing is, two bolts, there should be three. There's one missing, two bolts on the bottom. You've got a bolt here and a bolt here, and then you literally just curve it out and lift it up. So that has got um, as to this stage. So now I need to remove this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt, which will then take the front impact bar off. And it is nice to see that there's no damage on the impact bar. There does appear to be a problem with our bracket though for the radiator, so I need to have a look at that. It looks like it's been held back in by a strap, so maybe it's hit something low and just loosened it. But I mean, it's, it's, it's okay that side, it's just loose this side, so we need to do something with that. I'm not replacing the red, red pack just before someone gets in the comments and starts saying it, because this is a budget fix. Get it sold and get on to the next project. Okay, 
so I had to do a bit of work. Okay, so I had to do a bit of work off camera, um, mainly because I forgot to charge the camera, and even though it's got a super duper battery in it now, um, it doesn't help if it doesn't have power going into it. So I've managed to disconnect everything now, pretty much from the suspension. I've undone the bolt on the ball joint on the bottom here. I've undone the anti roll bar drop link, which is there, and I've also removed the end of the um, steering column. So that's off. So all this is now loose. On the other side, I got a little bit further along and I've managed to remove this. So this is the bush that should be complete. And as you can see, that's completely perished. I think that literally pulled out. And to get this off, I also had to undo the ball joint on here. But on the other side, it's proving a little bit more difficult. So I think I'm just going to drop it as it stands um, without trying to mess around. Um, I've undone the bolt here. For which goes into the chassis, which is one of these. Um, so now the next step is there is a bolt underneath here on both sides. They're the last two I'm going to leave in place. And then under here, I don't know if you can see that, you've got this one, that one, and another one somewhere. So you've got three bolts on either side. They need to come out, and that will drop this back down the back. And then when I take these out, in theory, that's it. But before we do any of that, we need to disconnect the reservoir. So let's do that next and get this bottle loose and so that drops down. I've also bent the heat shield up a little bit just so this has got more access to drop down. I mean, these pipes are quite sturdy. I've seen when other people have taken them off. So let's get this bracket off next. So now the subframe is off, I've let these sit for a little while with some uh, WD-40 just to penetrate the bolts. The videos I've watched, these tend to be the hardest ones because they're torqued to like 150 Newton meters. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on that side because we've already got the kind of L-shape arm off there anyway. Um, and then we'll come over to this side and have a go at that. So. Let's see how lucky we are getting these bolts out easily. Okay, so starting off, we are working on the bracket uh, that holds the anti-roll bar in. And so those bolts go all the way through and hold in that bush that we need to replace. These actually weren't too bad. The approach I took is obviously soak them with loads of WD-40 to start off with, let that sit for about half an hour. And then I basically used the breaker bar to move the bolt backwards and forth just to three, free up the thread. Um, and these, I say, they came out okay. Um, one thing you want to make sure of is when you put all the bushes back in, make sure you put them back in the right way around. So take photos every stage um, so you don't miss anything. Um, here I'm just showing you the well, what's remaining of the bush. I think another channel would say that's been a bush for too long. Um, and yeah, you can understand now why that's an MOT failure and how important it is that we are changing all of this setup. Uh, then we move on after this bit onto the ball joints, the inner ball joints. Now, out of all the bolts I had to remove, these were an absolute nightmare. I think it took me two hours to get one bolt out in the end. Um, obviously, you have the benefit of time lapse, so it's all sped up. Uh, but basically, 
the uh, there was a bolt on each one which felt extremely tight to the point I did not want it to shear. So I just worked it, moved it out a little bit, and then just kept on soaking it with WD-40. This was the last one to come out. This is the one that took me like an hour and a half to two hours to do because I just kept on coming back to it after it had time to soak. Um, and then basically after that, um, it got so late that I decided to call it a day and we will pick up on the next day. Okay, so it is the next day. Um, I made a little start this morning just to try out a few things before I started doing any videoing. So what I've done already is I've fitted the new ball joints here and here. Um, I only had two new bolts, so I've had to use the best of the two old ones on those, um, but they're all torqued up now. Uh, 153 newton meters, I think it's supposed to be. So we've got the first, I was really worried about this. So on, these new um, bushes here, they can be quite difficult to get on, um, but I managed to do it straight away. So I just put fairy liquid on the end of the um, metal bar here and put a little bit on the inside there, just pushed it and it went straight in. So I thought I was going to have to get a clamp or a press or something to get those in, but that's gone quite well. So now, before I go any further, I need to change out the bushes on this anti roll bar here. So these ones aren't too bad actually. They're old, but they're, they're not perished. But as we're here, I've got two new ones. So I'm gonna pop those on now and then I'll get this side. Um, no, I won't, I'll get onto that side. We'll get the same arrangement put in place on there and then we can get it all bolted up. Right, so there's like a nylon thread on the inside of there. I don't know if you can see that, but it should just be a case of pull this metal bit off like that and then lift this one out yeah see I mean comparing the two that one's had hardly any wear on it so these might have been done quite recently but we're here and if I do it I know it's been done so get the other one over there and I onto that and then just push that bit back down right I'll do the same on the other end and then we'll move on to the other side of the suspension right so this is exactly what I did on the other one so that's the orientation we want to go with so this needs to go in that way into there. Get this. To there. Plenty of that on there. And then literally rested it like that. You've got a hexagonal pattern inside it, so you just need to match it up. And then I just pushed it. This one's not gonna do the same, is it? It's gonna be awkward. Oh no. There we go. And there we have it. So that will now go onto there. So let's get that bolted up. Lift this up. I'll keep rolling. So you can see what I'm doing.
there we go that's the orientation and then our anti-roll bar sits on the top and then we obviously bolt through those four bolts there right so i've just talked up the four bolts that hold on to the uh, anti-roll bar and the bushings at the back so i think we are good to go right so bottom outer ball joints are all fine i'm not going to replace them i may as well send the parts back and get a refund because they're not split or anything so the next thing to do get this on the jack and get it back underneath the car i'm just going to pop the front bumper off again um and then yeah we're just going to slide this back into here you've got the two electrical connectors you've got for the um, power steering we've got the small one there and then we've got the big power block so yeah we'll get it into position raise it up i'll get some of the bolts aligned um and then we'll probably start from the back and work our way forward so starting with the six bolts down the back here get that all into place then we'll go for the big bolt down there and so just gradually make our way forward the only thing we've got to be careful of is feeding that um power steering reservoir back up into the engine bay so could be a bit tricky but we'll see how we get on Okay, so that actually went in quite easily. I changed my approach when I got the, um, this almost into place because there's basically like a little pin that sits here. So I used that as a guide point to get this one and the other side aligned. And then as soon as that was done, I got those loosely bolted. And when I jacked it up, it then lined up perfectly with the bolts there. Got those two in, did the six underneath. And that's it, happy days. The electrical connectors are all back on for the power steering. Um, we need to tighten up this ball joint nut here. I couldn't really do it while it was on the floor. Um, refit the anti-roll bar, um, refit the hub back onto this, and then reassemble the brake. So I'll crack on with that now. And so that is the um, steering column reattached and bolted back up, just a 13 mil nut on the end of there. Okay, so we had some family come over, so I had to kind of like cut the recording and just kind of crack on while talking to them. Um, so I've built this side back up, disc is on, all the bolts are done and everything else. Need to replace this sensor wire here for the brake pad sensors because we've got a light on the dash. And then on this side, we're all built up, ready to go. So I've put the impact bar back on the front. I think the next thing to do is I'm going to put the bumper on, um, get that back into place. And then we can fit up the wheel arch liners because a lot of these cables all get hidden by the arch liners so i need to plug them all back into the bits in the bumper anyway so i'll do that next and then we will put the arch liners in and get the wheels back on i think we're done right so that's both arch liners fitted back up on both sides that leaves us one last thing to put on and that's the wheels. So three, two, one.
All right, so no more movement in that wheel. All done. So next thing we'll do with this, probably I'll see how long the footage is on this one when I collate it all together. But if it's too long, I will uh, do the wash in another video. And then, in fact, yes, I will do the wash and the vinyl stripes and everything in another video, because at least then it's a little bit more content. All right. Time to go and get a drink, I think. And then when we take this for MOT, because obviously all of that adjustment will have thrown the tracking out, we'll get the tracking done as well. Because to me, that wheel is out. And that wheel is also out. So I'm guessing that the over time it's adjusted all of the positive, is that positive camber, not camber, positive toe. So, yeah. Okay, so I think that brings us to the end of the first episode on the Mini. Um, apologies, it's been about three weeks since I uploaded the last video, but as you can probably tell by my change of surroundings, we've actually moved house now. So that is going to make a, a lot of difference to the channel. When I finally get all the boxes out of the garage, we will have a garage to work out from um, over the winter period. So we're not going to be stood out in the rain. Um, there's a couple of little bits we need to kind of tackle straight off. Um, one of those is on the Corsa. Uh, the sump is leaking slightly, which is a bit of a pain. Um, so I've ordered a new sump gasket, so we're going to have to drop the oil out of that and change that over. But I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who subscribed. We're over a thousand subscribers now, um, and I've seen like a big increase in the number of views that we've been having on the videos. So I really do appreciate everyone taking their time to watch the video. Again, if you do enjoy it, please hit that thumbs up button. That really, really helps the channel. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And if you think anyone else might like this video, please share it on your social media and kind of spread the word to help the channel grow a bit more. Without anything else to say, thank you very much. And I'll catch you in the next one.